I'm here in Jining in northern China on an amazingly sunny day and that's entirely appropriate because I'm at the headquarters of Asia Silicon which is one of China's fast growing solar companies. Asia Silicon is really a gamble by Wang Tihu. It's American educated but Chinese born chief executive who, who's a scientist who's using his skills that he developed in America to try and push on China's industrial development. During the 1990s, Mr. Wang worked at the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Colorado. After this, he saw an opportunity to set up by himself. Since the early 2000s, we saw the uh, uh, you know, beginning of the solar industry to take off, and we see the potential of solar energy to benefit the whole world. So. Um, uh, personally, uh, deep in my heart, I feel we can do something to use my knowledge gained in the laboratory to uh, industrialize those ideas. Mr. Wang says, rather bravely, that he hopes Asia Silicon will make almost 5,000 tons of pure silicon this year, up from about half this last year. But he's in an industry that's been hard hit by falling prices and lower than hoped for demand. The high purity silicon business has been thrust to importance over the past decade due to a combination of impressive technological advances and an accelerating interest in green or low carbon forms of energy production. In the past five years, China has become a much more important player in this industry, mirroring the growing part the country plays in global business. So why did Mr. Wang set up in the remote city of Xining? Well, unlike many industries that have set up in China, Asia Silicon wasn't interested in low wages. No, labor actually is a small part of this cost structure. Uh, the major part is the uh, uh, material consumption and energy consumption. As far as raw materials go, location wasn't really important. Silicon is the main constituent of sand and it's the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust, after oxygen. What matters is purity. To qualify as high purity, raw silicon has to be refined to get rid of trace materials so that the purity level comes down to at least 99.99999%, or six nines as the industry calls it. The chemical processes for making this happen are not easy to master. As a result, until about 10 years ago, global high-purity silicon supply was controlled by just a handful of high-tech companies, such as Hemlock in the United States and Vacker, based in Germany. New producers from Asia, led by GCL of China and OCI in Korea, were attracted by rapidly increasing demand for pure silicon, caused by the rapid growth of the solar cell industry. In 2006, Mr. Wang decided to get in on the act. I have my big plans, but I need, just need some key people to fit in my puzzle to, um, with specialized you know, uh, knowledge. With four of the six top solar cell producers in China and another in Taiwan, Mr. Wang's business plan appeared sound. The problem is that too many other entrepreneurs had the same ideas as him there was simply too much silicon on the market. Being in the solar industry today isn't a passport to riches. There's an awful lot of overcapacity in this industry, especially at the level of the materials that Asia Silicon is making. But Mr. Wang thinks he can use his expertise in technology and engineering to drive down costs and therefore become one of the top global competitors in the low cost end of silicon and thus gain an advantage on a lot of his international rivals. In the drive by China to become a global force in high-tech industry, Mr. Wang is hoping that his company can emerge as one of the winners. This is Peter Marsh, Financial Times, Jining.